Hello, thank you very much for having me at the Rix5 Summit. I am Christian Duran. I am a research assistant in the University of Electrocommunications, and I will bring you this speech about EE hardware for Rix5. This work is a collaboration between the University of Electrocommunications, the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, and the Technology Research Association for of secure IoT Edge application based on RIX-5 open architecture. Uh, an announcement is that the result of this work are also obtained for a project commissioned by the New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization. Without the, without the way, uh, this is the outline of the presentation. Uh, first, we will introduce the motivation uh, and our work in the general scope. Uh, then we will describe the process of a trusted execution environment we will also show the implemented hardware to confirm the system from a general perspective. Uh, between points three and four, we plan to have a little recess where the public can do questions and request for clarification of what is shown. Uh, after this, uh, we will detail the crypto course and other hardware models. Finally, we will show our conclusions and a final section for questions will also be made. So, with all the way, uh, this is the motivation of this work. First of all, uh, we based it on work in the Chipjack platform. This platform allows very customizable SOC that contains a variety of X5 cores like the Rocket Core, the Berkeley Auto Machine Boom, and the ETH Zurich Ariane Core. All cores are implemented using the Thailand buses and also includes peripherals and accelerators. We believe this platform enables many possibilities to implement several applications. Particularly, our application is to implement the, the trusted execution environment. Uh, we implemented and executed the open source case in TE. Uh, the TE enables security capabilities like, out, like authenticate the device where the system is running, and also authenticate the software that you want to secure. Uh, this platform is very useful for implementing security on cloud computing and sensor networks. It starts from a trustworthy hardware uh, for building a uh, uh, secure execution environment, uh, which contains the enclave contents for doing remote attestations. Uh, to build this trusty hardware, uh, we build the TE hardware repository. Uh, this is a work in progress where we, we implement the crypto acceleration, authentication, and isolation schemes. The case on firewall can be adapted to this hardware to speed up the authentication process, uh, perform uh, cryptography and hashes, and also build and authenticate a silicon dwarf of trust. Uh, we have built a number of demos, both in the PDA and ASIC. Uh, first, uh, in late 2019, we built uh, the PDA demos uh, using this, uh, this, this sci fi freedom hardware environment. Uh, we built uh, our original actually in October 2019, right about here, with a four-core uh, rocket-based system on a chip uh, without any crypto acceleration. We started considering using Chimier about this time. So uh, in January of, tw uh, of 2020, uh, we built a second chip uh, with two rocket-based uh, SOC. This is the first chip uh, featuring crypto accelerators and some additional hardware to speed up the authentication process of the TEE. Later this year, uh, we developed two sister chips, uh, where one uh, features a single core boom with the crypto accelerators. We also explored the possibility of including this in a smaller SOC. So we also built a 32-bit uh, boom rocket hybrid SOC uh, in a manner of microcontroller applications. We plan in the near future of 2021 to have an isolated architecture plus silicon word of trust, uh, both in ESOI and, uh, and, and regular RF 180 nanometers. Now, you can replicate the demos for, the, for, for, uh, for now in these three boards uh, in a PDA. The TA hardware running Keystone and Linux are implemented inside of the Altera uh, TR4 and the DE4 and also inside this 707 uh, The demonstration included the elaboration of the port of cross in a zero state bull water and the procedure of hashing and signature of the Linux to run. 
Uh, as for the run of the chips, uh, the first one uh, that I already talked about is a 4-4 rocket chip based, uh, based SOC. Uh, this one doesn't use a chip chart, it's only it's a, a, a freedom package. Uh, and this was implemented in a ROM 180 nanometer process and it has a size of 4.5 times 7 millimeters. And it doesn't feature any crypto core accelerators. The next chip, uh, it uses chip chart for building the hardware. It's a two-core rocket-based SOC and contains the SSH3 AS and ED255Y9. It also contains the book measures, like the including of an SPI for the rocket uh, for the bootload stage, and a USB 1.1 1.1 for communication for communications. This chip is also done in in ROM 180 nanometer process, and the size is 4.5 and 4.5 millimeters. Uh, the sister chip that we were that, that were developed later this year, uh, uh, we implemented the Berkeley Auto Order machine. Uh, this core is a very big implementation indeed, uh, that fits in the same 4.5 that times 4.5 millimeters. Uh, so this is only one core. Uh, the same uh, crypto cores were implemented as well, uh, also combined with the QSPI and the USB 1.1 as well. Uh, finally. Uh, to explore the possibility of microcontrollers, uh, we implemented a dual-core RIX-5 32-bit uh, iMac system on chip. Uh, with, boot, with both uh, rocket and boom uh, cores in a hybrid connection, uh, uh, both of them uh, also uh, fitted in the same space. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. So for the chip demos, actually we don't have any uh, DDR5 included. Uh, we decided to import, uh, to, to export, sorry, to, to export the, the, the TeleLink bus and attach its connections to the TR4 FPGA, where we can use the rocket chip diplomatic conversions to Axi4 and the FIA, FIA implementation of the Altera FPGA. With this, we can support a total external memory of 1 gigabyte, which is perfect for Linux applications to run. So. In these demos, uh, how do we actually include the trusted executor environment? Uh, first of all, a bare minimum system architecture is like this. The requirements for the system uh, TE to run only require the ability to have memory protection, or PMP, and also being capable of running the privileged instruction set in, 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 in all the modes, uh, in user mode, in supervisor mode, and batching mode. Uh, both rocket chip and boom uh, implement both of those requirements. Uh, from here, we implement the sole hardware essentials into the peripheral and memory buses like the DDR controller, the UART, uh, the SPI, and the, and, and, and the multimedia car uh, controller and flash for SPI. Uh, we embed the authentication process from the device in the, in the boot process. Uh, the, uh, this will authenticate the Berkeley bull loader, the DDL, which also contains the Linux and the case by itself. So we have a zero state bull loader. Uh, this program will only copy a specific partition that contains the next stage boot into the memory address 90 million. Then just right there, just to uh, run the first state bull loader in the address 90 million. Uh, the next stage is the first state bull loader. We read uh, the BBL uh, from, a, from a specific SD card partition. Then we write it to the address 80 million. Uh, we sign this BBL uh, using uh, ED255.19. Uh, this ED255.19 also requires uh, hashing, so we will talk about that later. But finally, uh, after authenticating this and signing this piece of code, we finally jump to the RSA email to, uh, to start running the BBL and also the secure monitor. From here, uh, the BBL setups the secure monitor for Keystone to run with the with the given signature process and also start Linux. It's from here that the Keystone firmware starts between the different modes of the processor. So uh, I'm going to define uh, to depict the, the the chain of trust that we establish in the in the boot process. So uh, the CSPL actually is intended to have a hidden, a, a, a hidden, sorry, a hidden and an anti-temper memory. So the manufacturer can store the device through key uh, around this memory space. 
And with the root key, uh, we can authenticate the device by creating the initial device public and secret keys. Uh, uh, this is the location where the, the root key is supposed to be held, uh, but for now, uh, the hardware is not supported. Uh, for now, the creation of the device public and secret keys are fixed in the FSPL, but we will detail uh, a further solution for this in the presentation. So, uh, the FSPL reads the BBL uh, and performs a signature process using SSH3, a uh, hash, and the ED25519 elliptic curve signature. Uh, for this, we, we, we use the established uh, the device secret key for the signing and store inside of the secure monitor uh, the signature itself. Uh, with the supposition that the secret key, this secret key is generated, uh, this signature provides the mechanism for trusting the implementation of the keystone at the Linux itself uh, from the device. Finally, inside of keystone itself, whatever enclave is created, uh, the secure monitor will sign in a similar manner the contents of the application itself with the enclave using the secret key. This final signature provides the end of the chain of trust of the two of the TE enclaves. From here, uh, you can use the general signatures and public keys to perform authentication at the stations. Uh, a verifier can check if the public key is correct. Also verify the, the signature of the secure monitor uh, from the device root key. Uh, finally, uh, uh, can verify also the claim is authenticated by the secure monitor itself. So every execution process is provided for an authenticated source, in this case, the, the secure monitor. The way that Keystone works is to provide each of the environments in, a, in, in different execution uh, modes. Uh, I'm going to depict here a, a software perspective of how the system is handled around, uh, along the three modes uh, escalation. As uh, we saw before, uh, the Keystone uh, uh, pro provides the root of trust from the, from the root keys since, since the power off of the system, carrying through the signatures and key generation in machine mode for the secure monitor. Uh, we also built a, 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 an application in supervisor mode, uh, and the, a, 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 and the clay will, will finally be uh, built in, inside of the of, of the supervisor mode itself. Uh, finally, the, the user mode will contain the, 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 the content of the application, uh, and we will exemplify uh, this with uh, with a specific demo. So for this pretend. Uh, we will show an example of verification at the station using an external link uh, in a remote uh, PC. The claim host is running in an untrusted execution in, in user mode, and the communication can be done using UART or TCP connection. The client uh, will send uh, a, 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 trust, a, a trust client request, uh, it is just a trigger. At this moment, uh, the host in the in, in untrusted side will create the Keystone uh, and create application, which in pair will create the, 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 run, the runtime in supervisor mode. Uh, this runtime, uh, named Airy, uh, will bring in the bridge of communication between the enclave application that is stored here and the secure monitor that is in, uh, in machine mode. All of this is authenticated through the different execution mode when it's created, in the same manner that we said before, uh, uh, using signatures. The case and application will extract the information from the secure monitor and the authentication signatures. Uh, everything will be in a, a packet in a report, uh, which is sending a, a, a in several packages to the, to, uh, to the verifier to check the attestation. So, sorry. An example of this uh, is, is 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 this report that we defined here. Uh, the report contains the secure monitor of the signature and the public key. Uh, from the enclave application, we we'll, uh, we also have the signature as well. And from the device, we also pack the the, the public key that well, it's supposed to be generated, but for now it's fixed. 
from here, if the attestation report successfully authenticates in place, uh, the secure monitor, the device, uh, and the device, uh, uh, an asymmetrical connection is, estab is established. So uh, this is a, an asymmetrical uh, encryption manner uh, where we uh, share the the the, 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 the 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 public keys and the secret keys will be held by the, by, by each one of the of the of the entities to actually uh, do the the encryption the, the asymmetric encryption. So a board of application will send the public key uh, and the uh, uh, the client and the claim as well. Uh, and for this particular demo. Uh, the verifier sent a, a, a user string uh, through the connection. Uh, the Keystone application will reply with a number of words. Uh, this is a simple, a very simple demo, uh, but uh, it demonstrates the power of having a trusted execution environment for cloud computing. Uh, whenever you uh, want to, uh, 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 your application in the trusted side uh, to, uh, to be to be totally authenticated. Uh, from the start of the system, uh, this is the way that is done. Okay, so there's a lot of taking. Actually, we, uh, we uh, so we will talk. Uh, uh, this is actually a lot about the about the software part of the of, of the system. Uh, and we will talk now about how the. Uh, uh, how the hardware was implemented to actually make uh, to, to make this uh, this implementation of the TE possible. So the full system architecture includes several more features uh, to bring flexibility to the design, and that is for uh, building any kind of uh, on SOC that you want to make uh, uh, that, that wants to support the the, the, the trusted execution environment. So that the hardware generation includes the, the rocket core and the Berkeley Auto Machine core. Uh, the T hardware, uh, particularly for the boom, uh, we support both uh, version 2 and version 3 uh, uh, processors. Uh, everything is thanks to the, the, to the GDR hardware integration. Uh, but for now, uh, uh, we, we have a uh, particular in, uh, in, our, in our repository. Uh, the boom core, uh, 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 the different implementation of the boom core uh, are in different branches if you want to try out. Uh, the system features a uh, Tyler Link uh, that integrates a uh, system bus, the memory bus, and the peripheral bus uh, in both core and core architectures. Uh, we included uh, the three crypto accelerators as peripherals. Uh, those are the SJ3, the 825519, and the AES. Uh, some other utilities we all, were also added, uh, such as the random number generator and the USB. Uh, the USB is just for communication purposes. Uh, the random number generator is for, for generating uh, a seed for, uh, for, for generating, uh, for creating, uh, uh, pulling and secure keys. Uh, the rest of the peripherals uh, uh, are supported previously by Sci-5 of, of the rocket chip project. Uh, those include the, the GPIO, uh, the MMIC controller, the UR, the PCIe, and uh, the debug uh, model, the, and also the the, the, uh, the, 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 the PRCI and the Clint as well. Uh, everything is already uh, included before uh, from 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 from, from chip here itself. Uh, as for the memory, uh, we contain a DDR controller uh, for allowing the system to support uh, up to four gigabytes of memory. Uh, the, the the ROMs uh, SPI and mass ROM uh, are also capable of uh, of being totally removable or not, uh, depending on the configuration of the hardware. Uh, uh, both uh, ROM SPI and the mass ROM are capable of hosting the the FSBL and the CSBL, uh, and and we set the rest vector depending on whatever the 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 the, 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 the boot room is located. So 
You can try the demonstration of this system right away. Uh, it's just enough to, uh, to use a uh, clone this repository and, uh, and perform an, uh, an update uh, script. Uh, for, for here, uh, 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 we need actually just uh, two components. The first of all is the is the is the Redfly toolchain. Uh, the Redfly toolchain you can just uh, download it or you can uh, build it from scratch. Uh, in, in whatever manner you just need to uh, to provide the the executables using the the, 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 the path variable. And you also need to provide a validator. Uh, the current version of validator that is supported by by Chipyard is uh, is for is for uh, point zero uh, two two eight. Uh, that specific one is the one that works. Uh, you know, I tried other ones, but uh, the other one doesn't work as well. And you also need to uh, to, to send the, the, the path variable to validator as well. From here. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, we are going to explore uh, the configurability and extensibility uh, uh, of, of those make of, of the make files that we created in this repository. First of all, uh, you can change the intended PDA board. Uh, we supported previous three ones, uh, the VC707, the DE4, and the TR4. Uh, you can set the extensions or, uh, of, 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 uh, supported by the processors involved. Uh, so you can you can put uh, whatever extension you, you, you might like, uh, and uh, and set uh, the 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 the, the word length uh, ever to to 32 or to 64 bits. Uh, you can set up the memory bus by separate, and you can choose also a, a different clock domain for the memory external interface. Uh, for the debugging uh, purposes. You can set the boot, uh, the, the boot sources and uh, whatever is permanent in a in a boot room, or is totally rewritable using the bagging process uh, in the QSPI. And uh, you can activate the PCIe controller uh, that is exclusive for the BC707 FPGA. And finally, uh, you can choose the processors that you want to include in this hybrid uh, variable. Uh, uh, we support four predefined uh, configurations uh, in dual core or X5 processors, but a combination of, uh, of, of looking at booming in different ways. Uh, right here, you can see some examples. Uh, you just run that, uh, the make file, whatever you, you, you need to, to actually run. And those are a, a, a little demonstration uh, that, 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 that we were here whenever we, you, you build the system. Uh, with open information of the CPU info uh, from, from the Linux uh, in different configurations, for example, we have two boom, rock, uh, two boom cores here, we have two rockets here, and we have the a hybrid uh, boom rocket and rocket boom uh, totally working uh, in 64 bits. So also to demonstrate the, 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 the ESA configurability, we support, we, we, we put here the, the, the 64 GC, the 64 uh, iMac, and the 32 GC as well, and the 32 bit uh, iMac as well. Uh, so, for this, uh, sorry, uh, okay, uh, I'm going to show you uh, an utilization comparison between the, the different core implementations uh, for you to consider. Uh, first of all, this slide uh, uh, that, that I draw here uh, uh, will differentiate the 64-bit implementation and the 32-bit implementation in the right. Uh, and for you to compare, uh, the FBI unit is highlighted here in blue. Uh, the full implementation of the ESA always occupies the most resources, although uh, the two rocket, uh, rocket chip in 64 and 32 bits are kind of similar in, in occupancy. Uh, the the iMac in a change leverages the resources down to 20 percent, uh, but it's still it's it's still similar between 32 and 64 bit implementations. So uh, we will talk about the implemented crypto cores uh, from this point on. Uh, so this is a a software uh, perspective from the Chisel uh, for implementing the hardware. So we basically 
implement a system composed of different peripherals, such as the crypto accelerators, uh, the random number generator, and the USB controller, uh, as well as different uh, sci-fi based peripherals. Uh, and this is all encapsulated in, 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 a, in a class that is named uh, a T Hava system. The system will encapsulate the subsystem, which at the time uh, contains the tiles that are uh, the rocket, the boom, and the Ariel, with the possibility of adding more if you want. Uh, the system is, uh, is encapsulated in a, in a platform where we uh, do the final implementation in, in the model itself uh, to exteriorize the course into the system. And this can be connected to uh, either a, a FPGA, FPGA uh, shell or a simulation environment. So particularly for the FPGA case, uh, we export from the memory controller the tiling bus. Uh, this bus will be recited externally by the FPGA shell, uh, which contains uh, a tile link manager. Afterwards, uh, the tile link will be converted into AXI4, uh, where it finally implements the DDI5 IP from the FPGA in question. Uh, so additionally, we supported this feature in the simulation as well. Uh, the test harness yeah, implemented a similar approach. Uh, we put it inside of a tiling manager and we also converted to Axi4. To uh, from from GSO, there is this uh, C based Axi4 memory controller, uh, which we implemented inside of the simulation manually. Uh, so, this is the way that, 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 that we are capable of testing uh, our design in both the, 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 the FPGA SOC and the simulation test harness as well. So I will talk about a little about the hardware generator itself. Uh, the hardware generator works uh, in a similar manner that the chip your implementation does, uh, but includes additional hardware libraries for the TEE hardware. So the first step is actually to uh, uh, Simu to, to, to include the simulation files that are going to be used by the chipyard. Uh, this is our generated uh, and will only output a list of files there. Uh, then from chipyard, uh, we have for, for chipyard everything uh, everything in the packet from GSO, uh, the rocket the rocket chip and the boom. Uh, and chipyard also has uh, some additional libraries for, for implementation in both uh, FPGA and ASIC as well. Uh, we take all of those and we uh, additionate our uh, our custom hardware, uh, the TE hardware there. Uh, so uh, with all of this, we create uh, our generator uh, that is just a function in, in a Scala that can be uh, that can implement all of these libraries to export uh, a list of files for the for, for the for the black boxes and a free RTL code for uh, for further generation of the uh, of, of the of the very low code, but we don't use this uh, this free RTL directly. Like Chipyard, uh, Chipyard will create uh, 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 this 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 utility class here that is named uh, Top and Harness. Uh, so the Top and Harness is actually a very uh, uh, a very neat feature that, uh, that actually separates the top that you want to that, that, that you want to implement into the into the ASIC and the harness that will uh, run the simulations on. So inspired by this, we actually uh, uh, created a multi-top separator, uh, which is used for for tasks for. Uh, for, for, for the task of, of, of separating this into cores, into, into multiple cores for the for the synthesis to be separated in different phases. For example, if you want only uh, to, 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 to compile the rocket core, or if you want to compile the, the boom core, for example, uh, as well. Uh, or uh, if you want only the system, or, only, or, or you want definitely the top uh, by itself. So, Everything in a hierarchy 
uh, will be separated by this separator uh, that takes the PRTL code and generates several PRTL codes and list files for the, for, for the, for the black boxes. And we'll also convert those PRTL into variable files. The last step is to uh, is to have the memory the memory compiler. Uh, Chipia has a memory compiler already, uh, already embedded inside of the of the Chipia itself. That is uh, functioning using Scala and, uh, and, and and the libraries of the PRTL as well. Uh, this will create several uh, uh, very long files uh, implementing each one of the memories. So by default, uh, it will just create um, the, the memory files for uh, for each one of the representations uh, for regular implementation of, of, of this in PGA or simulation. It was both in, it was very well in both. Uh, for now, in ASIC, uh, we just uh, uh, we take these uh, memories and just replace it with with black boxes, whatever is possible. Uh, so from here, uh, the, 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 the implementation will be uh, will be will be executed inside of any of the of, of the of the of the flows, uh, being those flows in FPGA like the Sci-Fi SPGA shell, or in Altera that we have several Altera projects for, for running the examples in Altera boards. And the simulator, and we have the simulator as well. And this is a, this is the things that are available in the in, in the hardware generator. So uh, we'll talk about the the crypto accelerators from now on. We include basically three ones: uh, the the SJ3, the AD25519, and the AES. So. This is a model of how we implemented different peripherals into the Chibia flow. So we use the register router. And, and the implementation of the register router can, is detailed very well in the, in the Chibia official documentation. And we consider that the register router actually brings a, a very good flexibility uh, uh, for, or, and convenience as well for implementing any kind of IP or peripheral into the memory map. So uh, we have basically uh, 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 some rules. Uh, the first rule is that uh, for any input in, in, in a hardware IP, uh, we put it in regular registers using break fields. Uh, with this, you guarantee that 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 the that the value is safe to, uh, through the calculation of any of any process that the hardware main uh, is doing. So any kind of triggers are also a hard field, but uh, we don't save the register. Instead, we we create a, a wire that is initializing false, uh, and whenever you write one in this in this specific register, uh, the the signal by itself will be triggered by uh, during one clock cycle, which we can use to to create either uh, the couple IOs. Or, or or just regular enables to connect to the to the hardware IP. Uh, any kind of status or outputs, uh, we actually put it into the into the real only register fields. Uh, the status completion uh, can be tracked by the software several times, uh, with the help of an introduction of an interruption as well. Uh, so either way, uh, you can monitor uh, through the bus uh, the, the, the the flags. Or you can just uh, use an interrupt for for mapping into a, into a function. So this is the architecture of the SJ3 accelerator. Uh, this is composed basically by five registers: the data that is here, uh, the final size, uh, the, the, the 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 trigger for the calculation, and the ready flag that is here, and the open data. Uh, this tree is composed by the padding model, uh, which takes the input and, and, and performs the padding and the shift according to the standard. This padding model actually, uh, uh, for, uh, when, 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 the, when the data is not complete, uh, the padding is not effective. Uh, we just accumulate it into a buffer uh, until we have uh, 576 uh, uh, completely done inside of the, of the buffer. We have we had 576 bits in the buffer, 
uh, we perform a round calculation in the in the in the blow box. So the round calculation mode, uh, model uh, contains a, const a constant counter that keeps track of the number of rounds uh, and, and a constant nonlinearity of the IUTA phase in the key count round. Uh, the first round is calculated from the for the first 64 bit data uh, pushed through the padding model. Every row state is stored in a, in a 1600-bit uh, status register. Uh, when the final data is pushed to the padding model, uh, the row calculation from the final rounds in the status registers. And then the first uh, 512-bit word can be used for the hash value for the calculation. Now, it's better to understand this uh, uh, from, from the software perspective. And we have here uh, a software representation uh, in, 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 the memo, in the memory map uh, of the SSH3 accelerator. So we, uh, we, we have this in a, in, in a particular uh, fixed memory offset where we have uh, all the five registers here. And we intend to hash the, a portion of data S that is located here in the memory, in the system main memory. Uh, to hash the S, and we first divide the data into 64-bit chunks that actually supports the IP. And whatever, every piece is pushed through the input register. And for each data pushed into the SSH tree, we trigger the SSH tree uh, calculation process. And so sequentially, uh, we, we wait for the DOM flag. And the programmer just needs to, the, the, to push this uh, for the possible length of the S until the memory less than 64 bits exists. Uh, so at this point, you you, you have maybe the, 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 the middle of the calculation, but uh, uh, for for totally closing the the, the 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 hash, you need to do a, a last iteration. So for the last iteration, uh, we have a, a we have a size of the a size configuration. That you that you enable in one whenever the the the, the last data is done. It's a one followed by uh, by those two x here, but those two x are actually the the leftover size of the last iteration. So you have a maximum of a of a bit of a bytes. Uh, so if it, if it's just the eight bytes, you just put zero there, right there. But if you have, for example, one or two bit uh, of two bytes. Uh, Left into the into the in, into the into the string, uh, and you put one, the, the, that value in those x as well. So you put the, you put also the last data inside, and you trigger again the 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 the, the, the tree, and uh, you will have your uh, finally your your hash uh, in 520 bit uh, mode uh, that you can use. Uh, uh, Pull from the uh, from, from the register router and put it finally inside of the of, of the free memory space. Now, this is the ED two five five one nine base point multiplier. So basically, the the base point multiplier is change of creating the public key from a from, from a private five hundred to a private key. And this particular register, well, well it's not actually a register; it's actually a memory. Uh, this memory will be uh, uh, will be will be only uh, only writable. If you try to read it, you will read zero. And this is for uh, for security purposes. So uh, whenever you push uh, any, any kind of of, of of private key inside of here, of here uh, the data will uh, will not be visible for dumping uh, by other entity. Uh, the processor just contains addition, subtraction, and multiplication allows uh, uh, bounded to the prime number according to the standard of the EED25519. So this, we have source and destination registers uh, that hold the intermediate data for the equation. Uh, and this will follow the equation of, for, the, for the cure 25519. So, besides the initialization, the strategy of this hardware is to extract each one of the 512 bits and execute a macro code whenever it's zero or one. Uh, the instructions are saved in a microcode room where the decodification will draw the sources and destinations of the operations using 
the execution of the programs that, is, that are stored inside of the microcode. Programmatically, uh, the 8255 based form multivariate works in a similar manner like the SJ3. So after you hash the, 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 the contents of S, we will see the SJ3. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, we, we store inside of the, of the 8255 based form multiplier in the C register. After this, uh, it's just a matter of triggering again the hardware, the hardware multiplier and wait, and wait for the finish uh, for, for the finish plan as well. When this is ready, uh, you can extract uh, the, the 256 bits uh, for, uh, for, for the public key. And yeah, uh, for, for these purposes, the, 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 the seed that you uh, uh, feed into the ED2509 is actually the, the, the private key, uh, plus some uh, uh, clamping uh, that, that is necessary for the, uh, for, for the, for the, for the number of space. Uh, so the, in this context, the, pro, the, the, the programmer just needs to extract here the public key uh, and store securely the, the, the secret key in, uh, in, any, in any other uh, secure memory as well. Uh, so we did the same for the D2559 signature. Uh, this only contains a, 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 a state machine that performs the six, a, a, a six operation of the calculus for uh, calculating the, 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 the equation for uh, uh, authenticating uh, 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 a piece of, of message that is M uh, uh, using using uh, 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 using the secret key. Uh, the operational limit is just the sum, the multiplication, and the reduction as well. Uh, the reduction is another is with another uh, prime that is totally different from the first one. So that's why it's in a different module as well. So uh, we also implemented the AES uh, uh, that support 128 and 256 bits. Uh, these AES have uh, an encipher and a decipher data path. Uh, the wrong key module handles the expansion of the EAS and also carries the calculation for the RAMs. Uh, the A cipher will contain the Xbox, the, the shift rows, the mix column, and the add round uh, that is just a sort. Uh, the, as an inverse process is just a main in the, in the AES decipher. Uh, and the final result uh, will, will be contained in, in a 128 bit uh, cipher text. So, from here we can actually conclude that the, how how do we do the the, 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 the boot authentication pro procedure, uh, particularly in FSBL. So the boot authentication is as follows: uh, we push all the data of the uh, of S into a SHA3 accelerator, and and remember the the S is actually the the, the, the BBL of the uh, that we want to authenticate. So the the SHA3 will uh, export the ha the, the hashed version of the of, of this data into the in, into a public memory. After hash after the hashing procedure, uh, we use this hash as a as a seed for creating the private key and storing the write only memory, the same write only memory that we saw in the in the in the the public key then is, uh, is calculated using a combination of the ED25519 base point multiplier and the SSA3 as well, and will output the public key into, a, uh, into the public memory. Uh, we have it both uh, private and public keys. The pull other hashes data, uh, the, the hash the data hash actually, with some different uh, auxiliaries. Uh, to be arguments of the signature generation function that uses the 8 in the in the standard. With this, uh, the contents of S are verified for attestation purposes, so the sign will be stored uh, totally inside of, uh, of public data as well. Finally, we have some results of the implementation of the crypto accelerators. The SJ3 contains four loads uh, up to 3.2 of the VC7 uh, utilization. And the ES uh, at the 8255 multiplication uh, both contain around 1% of the utilization. 
Although the multiplication consumes memory resources uh, for, for, for sources and result data uh, up to nine kilobytes. The signing procedure of the unit 559 uh, occupies 1.3% of the VC707 and share the same resources at the base point multiplier, so no additional memory is needed. In ASIC, uh, utilizing row 180 nanometers, <coughs> sorry, uh, each one of the crypto core accelerator occupies roughly one millimeter square. Uh, the 85 multiplication is the biggest of all the crypto accelerators, uh, and this is caused because the memories are occupied uh, roughly two times that the, the SJ3 model right here. The signing part of the 85 is the second biggest. Uh, there is an equivalent of 100, uh, 140 kilogates. Uh, and lastly, the AS is the smallest of all, uh, with only 50,000 equivalent gates. Uh, nevertheless, the execution of the SJ3 hashing improved a lot in this scenario. Uh, for quantity date, uh, uh, for, for any quantity of data, uh, the hardware counterpart performs up to 205, uh, 250 times faster uh, compared to the software approach. Uh, this compared with the, with the implemented keystone in a rix 5 Rocket 64-bit processor. Uh, and as for the throughput, the same comparison was done as well between the hardware and software. In this scenario, the software outputs out to uh, 100, uh, 110 kilobits per second. Well, the hardware uh, uh, proceeds up to 30 megabits per second for any size greater than two, mega, uh, two megabytes. With this comparison, the T hardware offers up to 273 times better in, uh, in trouble. So, we are not finishing this presentation. Uh, we, will add, we will add a description for other hardware models uh, that, are, that are contained also in the TE hardware. Uh, first, we will talk about the flexibility for the older ROMs that you can store the CSVL and the FSVL here. So we consider that the flash modules are a good start for inserting non-volatile code. Um, this chip solutions are cheap and easy to bundle and are very popular actually into, yeah, into into microcontrollers. Uh, so they are very easy to bundle and plug in into the FPGA. Uh, when developing the, the, the final T hardware, uh, you might want to use the, 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 the QSPI flash for inserting code as many times as you as you can uh, with the intervention of the debug model. In this configuration, the boot room will contain a simple jump uh, pro, uh, program for all the cores right here. And I will, will jump to the QSPI flash where the CSVL is stored. When releasing a proper, a, a proper working build for the software, this can be finally fixed for anti-temper purposes into the boot room. In this manner, the CSVL will be stored directly to the boot room and won't be writable. Uh, we consider the debugging as an important step to approach as much as possible in the real world of trust. Uh, the compilation of the CSVL typically involves to redo all the configuration of the PGA, which usually takes hours. So this is a good approach for actually uh, uh, taking account to, for, for doing uh, debugging in, in, in early stages of the of the TE hardware. And now we will talk about the random number generator as well. So this is the random number generator. Uh, basically. Uh, it accumulates uh, up to 192 bits uh, into a shift register for general purpose random creation. The implemented uh, trilogy can be flexible, uh, meaning that any size trilogy can be involved in this design. For the current build, we support a linear feedback shift register right here. So finally, uh, the utilization of the keystone can be changed to utilize different parts of the clay creation and application. First of all, you can use the hardware DD25519 multiplication uh, to create the device public and secret keys from the root key. Uh, next, the signature process can be done by the hardware DD25519 signature model. Uh, this can authenticate rapidly both the secure, the secure monitor and the created in place. The SSJ3 aids the calculation of the hashes in the platform. 
This, all, this also uses an auxiliary procedure for the hardware ID to 5519 procedures. <coughs> Finally, uh, any, any program that requires a random number generator for the seed of the 25519 uh, we, uh, we can use the, the random number generator that we embed in this application. Uh, this seed will be taken for the creation of the public key, for example. Uh, with different, uh, which is different for each session of the of the created in clay. So finally, I will uh, I will uh, like to add some final remarks of the work. So in this presentation, uh, we show a hardware generator for trusted execution environment optimizations. Uh, this hardware implements several crypto cores, which include the uh, which include the the SG3, the ID two five five one nine, and the yes as well as several uh, peripherals for input, output, and memories. Uh, this hardware generator is also configurable according to the needs of the final applications. It's also capable of choosing the RIG-5 cores to be used and the ESA options. Uh, we tested the design in several FPGAs, and it also was implemented in a 180 nanometer technology. We demonstrated also that the time of execution for, for the TE task uh, using hardware accelerator drops significantly uh, compared to pure software implementations. Uh, so, uh, this is all uh, for this presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me. Uh, at this moment, we uh, I am supposed to also listen to questions as well for, for the second part of the presentation. Uh, but for now, I will uh, conclude this, this presentation with this slide. So thank you very much again for inviting me here in the in the X5. I uh, hope you like it, and I will I will finish it right here. Thank you very much.